worship you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your goodness. For your love upon our lives. We are grateful, Lord. You've been so good to us. Thank you for all your good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. You are good. Hosanna. Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. We shall rise up on our feet as we sing from the Congress conference program. More about Jesus would I know? More about Jesus would I know? More of his grace to others show. More of his saving fullness see. 
more of his love who died for me. More about Jesus, let me learn. More of his holy will, the Son. Spirit of God, my teacher be, showing the things of Christ to me. More about Jesus in his word, holding communion with my Lord, hearing his voice in every line, making each faithful saying mine. More about Jesus on his throne, riches in glory all his own, increase more of his coming prince of peace more more about jesus more more about jesus more of his saving fullness see more of his love who died for me <laughs>
continue with our Bible reading. But before we read, shall we just have a moment of prayer? Father, we're asking that you will open our eyes of understanding as we read your word today. We're asking that relevant passages that really speak to our present needs and problems, spiritually and physically and materially, you will impress upon our hearts. Be with us, enlighten us, instruct us, teach us as we read together now. In Jesus' name, I pray. We'll continue with the reading now. The Book of the Prophet Isaiah The Book of the Prophet Isaiah Chapter 24 Chapter 24 Behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty, and maketh it waste, and turneth it upside down, and scattereth abroad the inhabitants thereof. And it shall be as with the people, so with the priest, as with the servant, so with his master, as with the maid, so with her mistress, as with the buyer, so with the seller, as with the lender, so with the borrower, as with the taker of usury, so with the giver of usury to him. The land shall be utterly emptied and utterly spoiled, for the Lord hath spoken this word. The earth mourneth and fadeth away, the world languisheth and fadeth away, the haughty people of the earth do languish. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof, because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore hath the curse devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men left. The new wine mourneth, the vine languisheth, all the merry-hearted do sigh. The mirth of tabrets ceaseth, the noise of them that rejoice endeth, the joy of the harp ceaseth. They shall not drink wine with a song. Strong drink shall be bitter to them that drink it. The city of confusion is broken down. Every house is shut up that no man may come in. There is a crying for wine in the streets. All joy is darkened. The mirth of the land is gone. In the city is left desolation, and the gate is smitten with destruction. When thus it shall be in the midst of the land among the people, there shall be as the shaking of an olive tree, and as the gleaning grapes when the vintage is done. They shall lift up their voice, they shall sing for the majesty of the Lord, they shall cry aloud from the sea. Wherefore glorify ye the Lord in the fires, even the name of the Lord God of Israel in the isles of the sea. From the uttermost part of the earth have we heard songs, even glory to the righteous. But I said, My leanness, my leanness, woe unto me. The treacherous dealers have dealt treacherously. Yea, the treacherous dealers have dealt very treacherously. Fear and the pit and the snare are upon thee, O inhabitant of the earth. And it shall come to pass that he who fleeth from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit. And he that cometh up out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in the snare, for the windows from on high are open, and the foundations of the earth do shake. The earth is utterly broken down, the earth is clean dissolved, the earth is moved exceedingly. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard, and shall be removed like a cottage, and the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it, and it shall fall and not rise again. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high, and the kings of the earth upon the earth. And they shall be gathered together, as prisoners are gathered in the pit, and shall be shut up in the prison, and after many days shall they be visited. Then the moon shall be confounded, and the sun ashamed, when the Lord of hosts shall reign in Mount Zion, and in Jerusalem, and before his ancients gloriously. Chapter 25 O Lord, Thou art my God, I will exalt Thee, I will praise Thy name, for Thou hast done wonderful things. Thy counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. For Thou hast made of a city an heap, of a defensed city a ruin, 
a palace of strangers, to be no city. It shall never be built. Therefore shall the strong people glorify thee. The city of the terrible nations shall fear thee. For thou hast been a strength to the poor, a strength to the needy in his distress, a refuge from the storm, a shadow from the heat, when the blast of the terrible ones is as a storm against the wall. Thou shalt bring down the noise of strangers as the heat in a dry place, even the heat with the shadow of a cloud, the branch of the terrible ones shall be brought low. And in this mountain shall the Lord of hosts make unto all people a feast of fat things, a feast of wines on the lees, of fat things full of marrow, of wines on the lees well refined. And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people, and the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death in victory, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from off all faces, and the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth, for the Lord hath spoken it. And it shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, and he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. For in this mountain shall the hand of the Lord rest and Moab shall be trodden down under him, even as straw is trodden down for the dunghill. And he shall spread forth his hands in the midst of them, as he that swimmeth spreadeth forth his hands to swim, and he shall bring down their pride together with the spoils of their hands. And the fortress of the high fort of thy walls shall he bring down, lay low, and bring to the ground, even to the dust." You have just listened to the Bible reading, and we need to take whatever we have learned to the Lord in prayer. Will you all rise up, please? Talk to the Lord in prayer. You've seen a commandment, a warning, an example, an instruction to obey, a promise to claim. Pray for grace that you will do as you have learned in the word of God. In Jesus' name, we pray.
crusades. We know the Lord is not tired of blessing us, and we will never tire of receiving from him. We have seen him move in mighty ways in response to our worship and sacrifice of praise. As Psalm 22.3 boldly proclaims, God does indeed inhabit the praises of his people. So join me as we sing for joy and welcome the wonderful psalmists and singers from nations and states and regions across the world. I am certain you will get your miracle tonight. Oh, my. 
dreams are wider than life is hard to understand. There is a miracle waiting, stretch for sky. When you are reaching up, just trying to touch the Lord, and it seems like your prayers are. Promise he'll be there for you, for there's never been a problem that he can see you through. Stretch for sign, stay the master. All his days is one single life of faith. When your hope and dreams are wider and life is hard to understand. There is a miracle waiting, stretch for thy hand. Reach out and touch the Lord as He passes by. You see, it's not so easy to I see you take 
of testimony miracles blessings God will be touching you we have check yourself now before you sit down check yourself what you couldn't do before and shout hallelujah when you see the miracle there shout hallelujah as you see the Lord has touched you shout praise the Lord so we can rejoice with you anywhere up there in the gallery first second in the ground floor check yourself move that hand move that leg Bend down and stand up again and see. Touch where that swelling had been. It's gone. The Lord has done it. Shout hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, we want to listen to your testimonies. As the, you check yourself, you can, we can be seated now. As you check yourself, come to the left-hand side here. If you have received a definite miracle, our leaders are waiting for us to interview us and to give you the chance of sharing your testimony with the people of God. Don't go yet. Stay. It's miracle time also as we have testimony time. Testimony time is blessing time. Testimony time is miracle time. Quickly stand up wherever you are. Come to the front of all five. 
and meet our leaders there, you'll be given the chance to share your testimony. The power of God has done it. The power of God has touched you. And online, all our brothers and sisters and friends that are connected online, please get connected through the guidelines that is being shown you through WhatsApp. You see the number there, 23480 plus 23480. And then you see the other uh, handle, the social media handle that are displayed. Please utilize them and send in your testimony. And we want to have the opportunity, give, you have the opportunity of also sharing it live. We want to hear your voice. We want to hear your voice as you utilize this media handle being displayed on the screen now. Please get connected, or if you are not able to do that, you can send it by text. If we cannot hear your voice, at least you can read your text. But use the means that have been provided. We want to know what God has done for you. Please stand up wherever you are and come quickly here. And in all the other locations where we are gathered, all the spotlights will, will have the opportunity in the various states and the various countries as well to be able to listen to your testimony live. So our media crew in all those places, please get them ready also. Let the leaders interview them. Get them ready. And the media crew, get yourself set to be able to relay their testimony. Uh, let's get prepared quickly. We want to start very soon. And our media department here, get ready also as we are receiving from uh, our brethren who are connected online. You'll get them set. Line them up so we can listen to the great things God has done in their lives. The miracle power has been released. The divine connection has been effected. And the power of God is already at work. Get prepared to, to testify. And as we are listening to testimony, get prepared to receive more blessing. Quickly, we are waiting. Why we are waiting to receive, check yourself. And as you see the miracle power of God in your life, we want to listen to your testimony. Stand up wherever you are and come to the front of all five. We will listen to your testimony, rejoice with you, celebrate with you. Quickly, we are waiting. Come quickly, come quickly. Come quickly, come and testify. Come and testify to give glory to God. Come and testify so that your testimony will increase the faith of others. So that your testimony will honor God and glorify God and put the devil to shame. Come quickly to the front of all five. There you will be given the chance to share your testimony. Our brethren in charge of testimony, please uh, interview them quickly. Come quickly to the hall, to the front of all five. We are waiting to receive your testimony. We want to know what God has done for you. We want to rejoice with you. We want to praise God with you. Come quickly. Leaders, let's attend to them. And online, let's know when you are ready in the media section. If you are already having testimony there, please signify. You can start quickly. Get set, get set. And the spotlight, the various states and various nations, get prepared. From the gallery, please come down if you have a testimony. First gallery, second gallery. 
please come down quickly. They are waiting for you here. Our leaders want to interview you and give you a chance of sharing your testimony. Media crew, ready? Do we have spotlights ready? Text ready? So we alternate. God has done it. Check yourself. The miracle power of God has touched you. You can remain the same with the power of God at work, with the divine connection and the reconnection. Check up. The power of God has touched you. Check up. The miracle is already there. And don't hide the miracle God has done in your life. In the company of the one out of ten that came to glorify God, don't be in the company of the nine that went without testifying. Where are the nine? They didn't come to testify, to glorify God. Come and glorify God. God has done something great, something good in your life. You have the responsibility, the duty of sharing it to the glory of the miracle working God who has touched you, who has healed you, who has delivered you. You need to come and testify to his glory, to his praise. Yes, media crew. Let's have the one from the YouTube quickly. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus. Banned by the bondage and shackles of the devil. Tonight, there is a reconnection for him. And that deliverance will be permanent in Jesus' name. No more bondage in Jesus' name. Yes. Hallelujah. Diabetes disappear permanently in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Complete healing. No more pain in Jesus' name. Yes, let's have the first testifier from here. While we are getting more from the, on, on, from the online audience. Praise the Lord. My name is Esther. I'm from Zion District. I'm here to testify about God. I'm here to thank God because when I came here, I was having a serious headache. I can't even bend my head. Talk less of doing it like this. And when the prayer was going on, I have to sit down because I cannot stand up. And there's some there's time that I stand up. I can't hold this. I have to sit down. So the man sitting next to me, I asked her to give me um, wrapper so that I can cover myself. But it was worse. But after my GS message, I received my healing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus. The healing is wrong. The pain, the ache, gone. And gone forever in Jesus' name. Fully free. Go and enjoy your freedom. Amen. Praise the Lord. My name is Japheth Osakwea from Lube. I, I had a serious pain in my hand. Anytime I touched it, it swelled up. And it, very, and it really pained me. So when our daddy, Pastor Kume, he said we should put our hand on the place that is paining us, as I put it there, after the prayer, he said we should check, he 
said we should change the place that's painting us. I pressed it, I pressed it, it didn't pay me again. I praise God in Jesus' name. Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus. And get ready for yours wherever you are seated. If you still have any challenge, God has done it for him. And the Lord, he tested himself. He checked himself. And the pain, the problem, gone. Amen. Check yourself also. And come out here and testify. Come and tell us what the Lord has done. Yes. Next testifier. Praise the Lord. My name is Okoye Cherechiku from Lube, Lube Group, Refugee Street. I want to thank God for keeping my family alive. Since last year, I was having ulcer and heartburn. But I want to glorify the name of the Lord that I've received my healing. Praise the Lord. Having ulcer and what? Osa, Osa, the Lord has healed her of Osa. Put your hands together for Jesus. Let's glorify the Lord together. Rejoice with her. The Lord has healed. Her. Free of charge, and the healing is permanent in Jesus' name. Amen. The God of miracles is here. Yes. The next testifier. Yes, let's go to Portacourt online. Portacourt, yes. Says this suit with uh, uh, Muko, very stinking. So I was so I was so worried. I'm coming here, sir. It was so serious and itching to the point to the point that uh, even sitting down there I was so comfortable. I think Hallelujah. Itching gone, the infection, the pause, everything disappeared. Healed and healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Itching gone, infection, the pause, everything Mais là où vous sentez le mal et quand j'ai mis ma main et après le dernier amen euh, la douleur a disparu je ne sentais pas la douleur que j'avais avant alors je voudrais témoigner ça pour la gloire de Dieu je vous donne au nom de Jésus interpréteur praise the Lord he said that he was having 
uh, shoulders pain, serious shoulders pain. And by the grace of God, when the man of God prayed, he lays his hand there, and immediately after the prayers, all the pains disappeared. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. As God is touching people here, touching people in various nations, different languages, and the mighty power of God has done it. Tonight, we have to rise up and worship God together. Remember, those who are to be here tomorrow, Friday, 5.30, come earlier to begin to pray. 30 minutes earlier for prayers. Amen. Amen. God bless everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. I welcome everyone to the first service and the first Bible study of the new year. And I pray that as we study the word together, the wonders of the Lord will never cease in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you for our Bible study. Thank you for this first day of the year. And thank you for the new studies you are bringing us to. We are asking, O oh Lord, that all these studies will bring every blessing we desire, every blessing you have provided into every life in Jesus' name. Bless us, Lord, and bless everyone gathered together, listening to the Bible study everywhere with us in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. Today we are coming to a new book of the Bible. Actually, it's the epistle of James to the church in general. And we are starting from verse 1 today. Look at James chapter 1. We're reading from verse 1. James is servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad greeting. As we look at James, we are looking at just this verse 1 today. He calls himself a servant of God. There are actually few Jameses in the New Testament, about uh, six of them. And with James says this, uh, the James that we know, a uh, very popular John and James, James and John. Those are two disciples and apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ when he was here on earth. But you understand that James, one of, one of the twelve, was killed in I mean, Acts of the Apostles chapter 12. And then another James offices in that same chapter. And it is the James, the brother of the Lord Jesus Christ, born of the same mother. That's why the people of the land said, uh, Is this not the carpenter? And not his brothers and sisters with us. And he named James and Joseph and the others. So this is the James that is the brother of the Lord Jesus Christ. And yet, he didn't call himself brother, he said James, a servant of God and of the Lord. What had happened is when Christ was still alive, the, the, the brethren did not believe in him, but after he rose from the dead, and they saw that this is not just an ordinary son of Mary, it's not an ordinary uh, brother, it's very God himself, and he appeared unto them, so they believed on the Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ and in Acts chapter 1 it says they gather together with the other disciples and they now accepted and believed that Jesus Christ is the savior of the world and is the very son of God. That's the James, the brother of Jesus but now in humility understanding that Jesus Christ was very different from who they were. He called himself a servant of God and a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. He was writing to the 12 tribes.
Christ that were scattered abroad everywhere. Uh, the Lord had said that the, that the uh, Jews will be scattered everywhere until they be regarded at the end of the age, at the end of the world. And that prophecy had been fulfilled. The children of Israel, their 12 tribes, had been scattered in different parts of the world. Even the church, the church also scattered at the persecution of Saul, who became Paul the apostle. He breathed threatenings on them, and they were scattered. And we're told that they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. There were believers and Christians in different parts of the world then as they were scattered. That's why he said James is servant of God and of the Lord Jesus to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad and then he brought greetings unto them. What said James writing about? Actually he's writing about faith. That's why we're talking about practical faith faith for all year round fruitfulness. If we're going to be fruitful, we need to have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the foundation of our faith, is the author and the finisher of our faith. And fruitfulness in every area of our lives, fruitfulness in Christian life, fruitfulness in Christian service, fruitfulness in the work of our hand will demand faith in Christ, the author and the finisher of our faith. Everything we need from the Lord in the spiritual as we pray we de it demands it requires faith in our hand look at verse 6 of James chapter 1 James chapter 1 verse 6 but let him ask in faith and we ask him for salvation let him ask in faith and we ask him for sanctification holiness without which no man shall save the Lord let him ask in faith and we ask him for the power of the Holy Ghost in our lives let him ask in faith and we ask him for wisdom so that we can live the life that is triumphant and that is victorious let him ask in faith and we ask him for healing let him ask in faith and we ask him for the fulfillment of the promise of God in any area of our lives let him ask in faith nothing wavering for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed as we look at this year and what is coming after today for the rest of the year want to walk by faith salvation by faith holiness by faith sanctification by faith righteousness by faith walking with the Lord like he not walk with the Lord it's all by faith and the faith is not a theoretical faith it's practical faith look at James chapter 2 reading from verse 17 it says even so if faith if it has not works is dead being alone that's why it's practical. That's why it's verifiable. That's why the faith we're talking about is the faith that we manifest, we exercise, and that faith has consequence as evidence because it must have works it must have the activity and the action that shows the faith look at verse 20 in verse 20 it says but will thou know O vain man that faith without works is dead we cannot just say I confess I have faith we must show the fruit of that faith we must show the practical evidence of that faith will you know and will thou know O vain man if we say we have faith and we do not have the supportive work and we do not have the evidence practical evidence that says we are vain our confession is vain our profession is vain our life is vain our so called belief is vain will thou know O vain man that faith without works is dead look at verse 2 26 in verse 26 for as the body without the spirit is dead so faith without works faith without action faith without evidence faith without practical demonstration faith without the lifestyle that shows you believe in the Lord that kind of faith is it so 
faith without works is dead also. It tells us in James chapter 5, reading from verse 15, James chapter 5 verse 15, and the prayer of faith, everything we do to have the attention of heaven must be by faith. The prayer of faith, the work of faith, the life of faith, the confession of faith, the attitude of faith. Everything we do as we come to the Lord and we're following after the Lord will be by faith and the prayer of faith shall save the seed and the Lord shall raise him up and if he has committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Repentance is by faith. The restitution is by faith. The relationship we have with the Lord is by faith. And so, as we come to the Lord and we confess by faith and we attract and we demand the forgiveness of the Lord by faith and we repent by faith, believing if we truly repent in our heart, he will forgive us. That repentance is by faith and the restitution is it's by faith because it's the restitution that shows and gives the evidence that we're truly repenting. And so everything, the righteousness by faith, repentance by faith, restitution by faith, relationship with the Lord, all by faith, the prayer of faith shall save the seed and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he has committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Verse 16, in verse 16, confess your faults one to another. That's the, that's the evidence we truly believe. That's the evidence we're not going to be living in righteousness. And we're going to be demonstrating the works of faith. Because faith without works, faith without action, faith without something visible that we can see. It's not a faith at all. It's not living faith. A dead faith. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that she may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth more. So today, as we look at this uh, beginning study in the epistle of James, we're looking at practical faith for all year round fruitfulness. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the servant of the Lord Jesus. That's how he introduced himself. That's how Paul introduced himself. That's how the apostles introduced themselves. And that's what we cheer. That's what we are. As we come to the Lord and believe in them, become the servant of the Lord Jesus. Number two, the servitude to the Lord. How do we demonstrate that we are servants of the Lord? We are servitude. And it is to the Lord the just. Uh, Jesus is referred to as the just. And then number three, the scattered in all lands. The justified. The justified, the saved, the forgiven, the people of God who are scattered abroad into all lands. Point number three then, the scattered in all lands, the justified. We're coming to point number one. Point number one, the servant of the Lord Jesus. The servant of the Lord Jesus. Actually in the Greek, in the, in the original language, the slave of the Lord Jesus, the born slave. And you attach yourself to the Lord. Whatever he says you will do. Whatever he says you will go. And you don't think you have any independent way of thinking, any heart of thinking, independent of him, anything that separates you from him. You are a bond slave unto the Lord, the servant, the bond slave of the Lord Jesus. Look at that, James chapter 1 again, verse 1. James a servant of God, a born slave of God, and a born slave of the Lord Jesus Christ to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. Greetings in Second Timothy chapter 2, reading from verse 24, and the servant of the Lord must not strive. The servant of the Lord must serve he must not strive. The servant of the Lord must uh, submit and surrender to the Lord, but must never strive. You know the servant of the Lord 
positively by what he does negatively by what he does not do positively the servant of the lord must serve negatively the servant of the lord must not strive no excuse for the servant of the lord for striving and there is a there is no situation there's no occasion where the servant of the lord will strive what's he striving for is serving the lord positively the servant of the lord must not strive but be gentle unto all men apt to teach patient look at verse 25 in verse 25 in meekness that is how he serves that is how he helps other people that is how he submits to the lord for the good of the people he is serving on behalf of the lord in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves if god peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth in verse 26 it says and that day may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil that the purpose of the servant serving that the purpose of the servant not striving that the purpose of the servant of the lord bringing uh, the life and the love of the lord unto the people is having so that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will the servant of the lord jesus three things we're looking at here number one the peculiar servants of god there are people in the old testament in the old covenant there are people before james that were servants of the lord peculiar servants of god number two this particular servant of God. This James that introduces himself as the servant of God. Number three, and the present servants of God. There are times the past servants, there are time that particular servant, their time has gone. Their dispensation has gone. This is our time and we are also to be servants of God, the present servants of God. We're looking at number one here. Number one is the particular servants of God. In Nehemiah chapter 10 verse 29, Nehemiah chapter 10 verse 29, they cleave to their brethren. It says, they are, they are nobles and they entered into a curse, into a covenant, and it says, and into an oath to walk in God's law, and which was given by Moses, the servant of God, which was given by Moses, the servant of God. Moses was referred to as the servant of God. The Lord called him. He answered. That's what servants of God do. The Lord sent him and he went. That's what the servants of God do. And the Lord gave him the word and he spoke only the word that the Lord had given him. That's what the servants of God do. And even when in danger and when in difficulty, he didn't alter the word of God. He didn't change the word of God the Lord said see that you do according to what you have been shown on the mount and that he did faithfully that's what the servants of God do and, the, and the, you know the Lord sent him to bring water for the for the thirsty and to bring food for the hungry and he did that's what the servants of God do they do not change whatever the Lord had given them to do the commission exactly what the Lord had told them that is what they did and because Moses did just that that's why it was referred to in his own time the servants of God look at Titus chapter 1 I'm reading from verse 1 in Titus chapter 1 verse 1 Paul is servant of God Paul is servant of God he was a sinner saved by grace that's what servants are they were going the opposite direction of the Lord calls them and they turn 
and they change and they go in a new direction now. That's what servants of God, that's what they do. What shall I do, Lord? Go to Damascus. And he went exactly to the place the Lord told him to go. That's what servants of God, that's what they do. And he was praying three days and fasting, not eating or drinking. That's what servants of God do. They're waiting on the Lord. They're praying to the Lord so that they will hear from God and whatever he says to them, they will do. That's what servants of God, that's what they did. And say, for this purpose, have I appeared unto you and I'm sending you to the Gentiles and they went to the Gentiles. That is what the servants of God, that's what they do. And he said, O King Agrippa, I have not been disobedient to the heavenly vision. The servants of God have vision from the Lord, heavenly vision vision and day after day and week after week they carry out the will of the Lord and the calling of the Lord. That's what servants of the Lord do. And here it says Paul is servant of God, an apostle of Jesus Christ. Apostle, that means the saint one. He sent me and I went to the place. He sent me to according to the faith of God select and acknowledging of the truth which is after godliness. Look at verse 2. In verse 2 it says, in hope of eternal life. Servants of God have hope in God. They're not just laboring as hopeless people. They're not laboring as people that have no future. Servants of God have hope in God. It's not just work, work, work. They work for a purpose. They work and they serve because they have a goal and they have hope in the Lord. If a person is just walking and walking but hopeless, he doesn't know there is a future and he's not living for the future. That's not a servant of God. He's just toiling and walking like other people that do not have any eternal faith, any eternal love and eternal hope in the Lord, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. Servants of God so believe in God that they know that God cannot lie. And they know that every promise God has given and every support he has promised is going to give. And they have hope of eternal life because they believe that God God cannot lie. Servants of God are the people that have trust in God. They are the people that have confidence in God. They are people that have hope in God. And they have eternal life promised by God. In verse 3, it says in verse 3, But as in due times uh, manifested his word through the preaching that is committed unto me, servants of God believe that Preaching is mandatory. Servants of God believe that preaching is indispensable. Servants of God believe that uh, a preaching is the essential sin. If sinners are going to hear about repentance and they are going to be saved, servants of God believe that it is through the preaching of the word of God. You see, there are people in so-called uh, churches that say that, you know, preaching is not uh, necessary. Uh, are those servants of God? They believe that other activities that they can do in the energy of the flesh they believe that that is what is necessary and they have a kind of a limitation on the preaching of the word well if you're going to be a servant of God the servants of God in the word of God they believe that it's necessary to preach because it is that that God himself has ordained in due times manifested his word through preaching in which is committed unto me. The servants of God know that something is committed into their hands and day or night, rainy season or dry season, convenient time or time of discomfort, they know that this is the commission, the commitment I have in the Lord, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior. Servants of God believe that we have 
commandments from God. Not just promise, not just provision, not just possession. And it is not just prosperity. We have commandments from the Lord. And the servants of God believe that they have commandments of the Lord, our Savior, and they carry that out. We're looking at number two here. This particular servant of God. We're looking at James chapter 1, verse 1. It said, James is servant of God and of the Lord Jesus. This James, you understood. God is separate personality. And then Jesus is separate personality. And he says, I am a servant of God. But no full stop there. Also, I'm a servant of the Lord Jesus. And a servant of the Lord, like this particular servant, will look at what God the Father has commanded and what God the Son has commanded because he knows I must be a servant to God, a born slave of God who sent his only begotten Son that I will not perish but have everlasting life but he will not say well I'm, I'm obeying the commandment of God finish I don't want to think about the commandment of Jesus all of us Jesus submissive to God I submissive to God finish no he knows that he is submissive to God as his creator he is submissive to God as the creator of the heavens and the earth he is submissive to Christ as his redeemer, as a savior. And so James is servant of God and of the Lord Jesus. I want you to look at Acts chapter 12 and we're reading from verse 11. Acts chapter 12 verse 11 and when Peter was come to himself, he said, now I know of a truth surely that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. You understand? At the beginning of the chapter, Herod had laid hands on James. James, the brother of John, and had killed him. And because that pleased the Jews, he now decided he was going to make him, you know, Peter a matter to be the next one to die and so he put him in prison and the angel of the Lord came from heaven and uh, smote him by the side and the chains fell off and he told him to put on his sandals and he did and dressed up and then followed after the angel and when he came to the uh, iron gate it opened automatically by itself and then to the next iron door it opened automatically by himself and when they came him out then the angel left and then Peter said now I know of a true surely the Lord has sent his angel and he has delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. Then he thought, where should I go? And went to the house of the mother of John, John Mark, where they were praying, knocking at the door, you know the story. And they were not open for some time. Then Rhoda came and heard the voice and with joy, went back to the people and said, that's Peter. Uh, first of all, they said, how can that be? You are mad. They didn't believe their own prayer. And when she insisted, it is Peter. Then he said, that is his angel. And then eventually they opened the door and Peter came in and they saw him. He beckoned on them. They should not make any noise about it. Look at verse 17. In verse 17, it says, but he beckoning unto them with the hand to hold their peace, declared unto them them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison and he said look at this go show 
these things unto James. With James, because you know the other James, brother of John, had died. This is the James, the brother of the Lord Jesus, and to the brethren. And he departed and went into another place. The James became a significant leader in the church at Jerusalem. In Galatians chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 9. Galatians chapter 2, verse 9. But and when James and Sivas and John, James, James came after them. When Peter and John were disciples and apostles, James, uh, one of the brethren of Jesus, did not believe. And they said, how do you stay here in secret? And then you say you are walking wonders. Go show yourself uh, to the people because nobody does anything secretly and then wants to, know not to be known openly because at that time they did not believe. But now he has believed. And as he believed, he grew quickly and even became the number one, the number one of these three. Have you noticed the arrangement of the New Testament epistles after Hebrews? Then you have James after that, you have first Peter, second Peter, Peter coming after, after James, and then after that, you have first John, second John, and third John, and Revelation. So you understand that this James, the brother of Jesus, grew and came up, and it says when James and Sivas and John who seemed to be pillars and when they perceived the grace that was given unto me they gave me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship and then it says that we should go and go Unto the, unto the heathen and they to the circumcision. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, only they would that we should remember the poor. They said, you know, hear the commandment of the Lord, the poor you have with you always, and you must minister to them. And here, James, Peter, and John, they told Paul, they say, yes, we understand the gospel you are preaching, the same gospel that Jesus is Savior there is no other name given among men by whom we can be saved except the name of Jesus. We're preaching the same thing, but remember the poor. And so he said, only they would that we should remember the poor, the same which I also was forward to do. We're looking at number three here. Number three here is the present servants of God. We've learned about the past past servants of God about the past peculiar servants of God we've learned about this particular servant of God now it comes up comes to our turn the present servants of God in Matthew chapter 24 reading here from verse 45 who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his Lord has made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season it says uh, you know there are present servants of the lord and the lord has called us to be faithful servants and to be wise servants and our wisdom is not maneuvering things our wisdom is to give the household the people of god the members of the body of christ to give them meat in due season to give them balanced meat not just the same thing Every time there are, you know, servants that try to serve the same food over and over and over, healing over and over and over, prosperity over and over and over, motivational talk over and over and over. It says no. Give them balanced meat that will nourish their soul, nourish their mind, nourish their lives. If in your home, in your household, you're eating the same thing, breakfast and lunch and a supper, how balanced will that be? There will be part of your life that will, not well, that will not be well ministered to, but the servant of the Lord of the present day, he goes through every provision of the Lord and he goes through the salvation is there, holiness is there, sanctification 
sanctification is there healing is there baptism of the holy ghost is there and the claiming of the promises of god there he gives them the balanced need so that when we're coming to the presence of god we know that the present servants of the lord will give us something balance if we're sorrowful there is the joy of the lord if you were sick there is healing from the lord if we have a mistake away and we've gone astray there is a reconciliation again there's repentance and then there is the bringing back of the prodigal son if we're forgetting about heaven about our eternal hope there is the message on the coming of the lord that jacks us up every time we come we have the balanced food of the word of God the scripture that is profitable in all things for all things for life and for godliness look at verse 46 in verse 46 they say blessed is the servant whom is Lord when he cometh shall find us so doing is the servant of the Lord blessed is that servant whom is Lord when he cometh shall find so doing that means there's no interruption in the service of the present day servants of the Lord because the Lord can come at any time and he keeps on ministering rainy season keeps on ministering dry season keeps on ministering when he has you know some peculiar uh, some peculiar pebbles in his own shoe and the sin is preaching him it doesn't say the church must go hungry of the word of God of the bread of life because I have a pebble in my shoe pinching me he goes on ministering and giving the balance food to the people of God when he himself is wondering how is the work bearing fruit and what is the response of the people he keeps on giving them the bread of life and blessed is that servant whom is Lord when he cometh shall find so in verse 47 it says verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods verse 48 in verse 48 but and if that evil servants there are evil servants there are good servants there are faithful servants there are unfaithful servants there are righteous servants there are unrighteous servants there are you know i service servants there are sincere honest servants and it says but and if that evil servant shall say in his heart my lord delays is coming verse 49 and shall begin to smite he wasn't doing that before when he started in the ministry when he started being the servant of the lord and the servant of the people he will serve them in gentleness he will serve them in all humility but now familiarity with the work has brought contempt familiarity with the people of god has brought contempt and now he begins to smite his fellow servant he begins to criticize his fellow overseers, his fellow pastors. He begins to uh, criticize and to slander his fellow servants and to, and to eat and to drink with the drunken, the worldliness that was not in his life before, the carnality that was not in his life before. All that has now come in because he has forgotten the coming of the Lord. He has forgotten the purpose of his calling as a servant of the Lord. And he can say things that will cross the you know, life and the mind of fellow servants. He doesn't mind he talks carelessly and he can beat the servants in a you know in a way and he can scot them in a way he begins to strive to smite his fellow servants and to eat and drink with their drunken in verse 50 and then it says the lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him and uh, when people tell the servant brother and uh, sister the way you are behaving now to the body of christ to the people of god you are not like this before leave me alone 
I'll, I'll make it good later. But now I must show them. I must beat them. I must show them who is in authority here. And he doesn't know the Lord will come suddenly. Because it says the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him at an hour, in an hour that he is not aware of. Verse 51, in verse 51, and the Lord shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites, because that's who he was. He said he was a servant of the Lord. He was serving his own ego. He said he was servant of the Lord. He was serving his own project. He said he was servant of the Lord. He was serving his own bad habit. And because he was a hypocrite, the Lord will gather him with the hypocrites, and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Philippians chapter 2, I'm reading here from verse 3. It says in Philippians chapter 2, talking to his own servant, it says, let nothing be done through strive or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. That's a good servant of the Lord. The good servant of the Lord understands there are different parts of the body. There are different areas of service in the kingdom of God. There are different areas of service in the body of Christ. And he doesn't think that his so own part is the greatest and the highest and the most exalted and all the other people, all the other servants, what they are doing we could do without them. He doesn't think that way. And he says, let nothing be done through strife or being glory, but in lowliness of mind. That's what a true servant of God, a true servant of the Lord Jesus Christ, in the present day will have lowliness of mind. Gentleness in interaction and uh, meekness as we relate with each other, and then let each esteem other better than themselves. You understand? Uh, the, the, the servants of God and the servants of the Lord are not people that beat down other people, throw other people away and they say because I am the main servant and all the other people if they don't like the way I'm doing it and the way I'm treating them, let them go anywhere they want to go. Uh -uh. It says you will esteem all the better than yourself in verse 4 in verse 4 it says look not every man on his own things but every man also on the things of others verse 5 let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus as you serve remember Jesus said I am among you as he that serveth it shows us the model it shows us the example and you have that mind in you let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus we're coming to point number two here point number two we're looking at uh, the servant and uh, the servant who to the Lord the just servanthood to the Lord the just we're looking at James again chapter 1 verse 1 in James chapter 1 verse 1 James is servant of God now James we must not be servants in mouth only in words only there must be the demonstration of being servant of the Lord as we reflect that in servanthood. It is what we do, it is how we do it, it is the benefit of what you do, it is the profit of what you do, it is the servanthood that shows we are real servants of the Lord. It said James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at Romans chapter 1, we are reading from verse 1. Romans chapter 1, verse 1. Paul is servant 
of Jesus Christ. He was antagonist of Jesus Christ. He said, I thought I must do many things against the Lord Jesus. But conversion came. Transformation came. A change of life came. A change of direction came. And now it's no more sinning against the Lord. It's no more striving against the Lord. It's now a servant of Jesus Christ called to be an apostle separated unto the gospel of God. We're looking at three things here. Number one, we're looking at the affirmed semblance to the true servant. A firm semblance, a servant of God, a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ that resembles Christ. That acts like Christ, that walks like Christ. Number two, the absolute submission of a transparent servant. As Christ was transparent in his work, in his uh, everything that he did, the servant of the Lord that is truly submissive, absolutely to the Lord, is also transparent. Number three, the approved servanthood of a trustworthy servant. The approved servanthood of a trustworthy servant. Let's look at number one. Number one, the affirmed semblance to the true servant. In a uh, Luke chapter 22, Luke chapter 22, we're reading from verse 27. For whether is greater he that sitteth at meat or he that serveth, is it not? Is not he that sitteth at meat, but I am among you as he that serveth. I am among you, not as he that served, Moses served, Joshua served, David served, his own generation, but he, he came and he brought a new standard, a new level, the way the servants of God will, will serve now. And as they look to those who have served in the past, they go beyond Moses. They go beyond Joshua, they go beyond David, they go beyond the Old Testament prophets because now he has come to show the perfect way. This is the way. Walk ye in it. He says, I am now come as the pattern, the perfect example and the model. I am among you as he that serveth. Look at verse 28. In verse 28, ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations. Verse 29, and I appoint unto you a kingdom as my father has appointed unto me. Verse 30, it says that ye may eat and drink at my table. That she may eat and drink at my table at present. Those servants are serving the people of God and the followers of Christ on his table. They're bringing everything he has provided from Calvary. Everything he has provided from the cross. And they bring it sincerely. And they bring it with a loving, cheerful heart to serve the people of God. And they bring it like Christ would have brought it to them. If they do that on the final day he says they will eat and drink with him at his table in his kingdom and sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. We're looking at uh, 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 21 because he wants the present servants and the present day servants to resemble him and to follow after him and to walk after his steps because he is the perfect model of servanthood. We're looking at First Peter chapter 2, reading from verse 21. For even here unto what ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example, leaving us a pattern, leaving us a model that ye should follow his steps that he should follow his steps what's his step 
They called Peter, called John, called James, called Andrew. Follow me. I will make of you fishers of men. He, all, he wanted to make them do something that others are not able to do. He wanted to train them. He wanted to transform them. He wanted to put value in their lives and then use them to bring value to the lives of other people. And if we are in semblance to him as servants, are we not going to think? Are we not going to plan? Are we not going to train? Are we not going to do everything that all the people that are under our our leadership as we're serving with the same servitude of Christ we want to bring value to their lives we want to bring them to a place they can also bring value to the lives of other people and we want to follow in his steps in life in godliness in holiness in sanctification as well as in service in the work of the Lord that he should follow his steps. Look at verse 22. In verse 22 who did no sin neither was guile found in his mouth. That is the life and the servitude of the present day servants of the Lord. Because we're following after the example and the model of Christ, and there'll be no girl found in our mouth. We will not deceive anyone. And the way things are is the way we tell them. This is the way it is. No deception, no lying, and uh, no girl, no craft, no craftiness. Because the servant of today must follow after the steps of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 23. In verse 23, who when he was reviled, he reviled not again. Uh, the servants of the Lord, present day servants, do not say, well, um, normally I'm good, but you know, the environment in which I live, there are people that they don't care for my comfort, they don't care for my ease, they don't care for my peace of mind. I too, I'm going to deal with them the way they are dealing with me. No, Christ did not do that. And Christ showed us the example and were to be in semblance to Christ on the pulpit, in the house, on the street, anywhere, everywhere, to individuals in the ministry and to corporate bodies in the church. When he was reviled, he reviled not again. They do that to me, I show them, uh uh. The servants of the Lord, if we're born slaves of the Lord, we don't do that. And we don't, uh, you know, say, okay, I'll find a way. Uh, God, give me wisdom. Give me the craftiness and give me the know-how so that I can strike them without they knowing that I'm striking them. Uh -uh. When, when we're servants of God and when we're born slaves of the Lord, he told us to feed the people. He told us to lead the people. He told us to help the people. And that is what we do you in semblance to Christ who when he was reviled he reviled not again and when he suffered he threatened not he threatened not he threatened not threats bring fear on the lives of other people and when you point the finger like this I even see singers now they point their fingers like this as if they want to you know poke their hands into our eyes no servants of God don't do that we're gentle and we're loving and when we come the people don't see anything in us to fear us they love us because there is no fear in love and there is no love in in our fear we come to serve whether we're preaching or we're singing or we're counseling anything we do there's no threat there's no threatening who when he was reviled he reviled not again and when he suffered he threatened not but 
committed himself to him that judges righteously. We're looking at First John chapter 2, verse 6. First John chapter 2, verse 6. He that saith, he abideth in him. Ought himself also so to walk, even as he walked. Ought himself, the servant of the Lord today, in semblance to Christ, resembling Christ in every way. He ought to work, he ought to love, even as he loved. He ought to preach, even as he preached. He ought to comfort, even as he comforted. He ought to reassure, even as he reassured. He that says, he abideth in him, ought himself, also so to walk even as he walked look at number two here number two is the absolute submission absolute surrender of a transparent servant of a transparent servant you see the lord jesus christ he was transparent transparent what i tell you in the secret go show them in the public it says in john chapter 18 verse 20 john 18 verse 20 jesus answered him i speak openly to the world i never taught in the i ever taught in the synagogues and in the temple whither the jews always resort and in secret have i said nothing in secret have i said nothing that i couldn't say in the public and he was transparent and we who are servants of the lord today must be that transparent we're looking at mark chapter 4 verse 22 for there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested there's nothing hid which shall not be manifested you're not carrying on any relationship with the members of the church or even members of the public in secrecy please i'm a member of deeper life what we we'll do together i don't want you to tell anybody never yield to the pressure what's he doing with you what's she doing with you never yield to the pressure and then when you see him or see her talking to somebody you come near and you fold your lips together and you stay there so he will see you you're giving him symbol sign remember close up that thing don't ever tell what we're doing together in the secret, what we're planning together in the secret. You might be a servant, but unfaithful. You're not transparent. And you are doing things and saying things. You even have to come and fold your leaves so that they will not carelessly reveal what you are doing together. There is nothing hid which shall not be manifested. Neither was anything kept secret, but it shall, it should come abroad. Look at verse 23. In verse 23, if any man have ears to hear, let him hear. In Romans chapter 2, reading from verse 16. Romans chapter 2, verse 16. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. The day is coming when everything hidden that had not been confessed, everything hidden that had not been repented of, everything hidden that had not that had not been brought to the uh, to the front burner and to the light of day that had not been restituted everything the secrets will come and christ will judge those things and if your life as a servant is full of secrecy 
your commitment to the Lord, the things you do, actually, you know, if our brethren see that, if they really knew you, they'll condemn that. They'll say, uh -uh, so that's how, uh, you know, that brother is. That's how that um, sister is. That's how that our father in the Lord is. That's how our mommy in the Lord, that's how she is. If they knew, they would have condemned you. That's how, uh, this is not scriptural now. This is not Bible. Now, this is not what we know and what we teach in holiness and righteousness before God all the days of our lives. But if you are hiding them, you are clever. And you say, He's righteous, she's righteous, and yet you are not transparent as a servant of the Lord in the day. The day is coming when God shall judge. The secrets of men and the secrets of women by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. We're looking at number three. Number three, we're looking at the approved servanthood of a trustworthy servant. The approved servanthood of a trustworthy servant. In Numbers chapter 12, reading from verse 7, my servant Moses is not so. It's not like Aaron. My servant Moses is not so. It's not like Miriam. You see, they were the same parents, but Moses distinguished himself. He said, the Lord called me. I know Aaron is my senior brother, and Miriam is my senior sister, and the way they talk and the way they act, the three of them normally should have been together every time. But when they want to gossip and when they want to slander Moses, they'll go apart. When they want to cut down Moses and criticize, they'll go apart why are you going apart one way i'm to you know shut the door against uh, moses so that we can do what moses will not see and what moses should not hear and here god comes and god said moses my servant is not so who is faithful in all mine house verse 8 in verse 8 with him will i speak mouth to mouth even apparently and not in dark speeches and the similitude of the lord shall he be whole wherefore then were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses, verse 9, in verse 9, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and he departed. Look at verse 10, in verse 10, and the clouds departed from off the tabernacle, and behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow, and Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was Leprous. The Lord wants us to have a life transparent that what we do in secret, we're not, we don't have to hide it from the public. What I do, I don't have to hide anything, anything, whatever, from the one who lives with me at home. And you don't have to hide anything from anyone, from your husband, from your wife, from anyone living with you at home. If those secret things are there in this new year, this is the time to become open. And before the judgment day comes, this is the time to make it open. Your husband might be surprised. You mean that's what was happening? I'm sorry about it. Your wife might be surprised. You mean that's the way you've been living? I'm sorry about it. But bring it to the open and live a transparent life. We're coming to point number three here. Point number three, the scattered in all lands justified. We're coming back to James chapter 1. James chapter 1, reading from verse 1. James is servant of God and of the Lord Jesus to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. Which are scattered abroad. In First Peter chapter 1, reading from verse 1. First Peter chapter 1, verse 1, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ to the strangers scattered, scattered, scattered throughout Pontius, Galatia, 
Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. They're scattered in all lands. The justified. Three things we're looking at. Number one, number one, the scattered assemblies throughout without the word the scattered assemblies without the word number two the scattered ambassadors in the world number three the scattered adventurers in the wilderness look at number one number one we're looking at the scattered assemblies without the word and when james wrote he was writing to those who are scattered and they, were, they had been scattered to different parts of the world and they had assemblies here, assemblies here, and assemblies there. And the Old Testament scriptures available was not in the hand of everybody. There was no printing at that time. And the New Testament had not been fully reaching and they were all scattered and they gathered in tens and twenties in uh, what they call small assemblies. How do we know they gathered in assemblies? Look at James chapter 2, reading from verse 1, my brethren have not the face of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory with respect of persons. Look at verse 2. In verse 2, for if there come unto your assembly, if there come unto your assembly a man with a golden ring and in goodly apparel, and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment. In verse 3, in verse 3 it says, and ye have respect to him that, uh, that uh, weareth the gay clothing, and say unto him, seek there in a good place and say to the poor stand thou there and sit here under my footstool in verse 4 it says are ye not then partial in yourselves and have become judges of evil thoughts the point is they had assemblies and they didn't you know every assembly did not have an apostle because when they were scattered they scattered everywhere except the apostles and in the assemblies they had they didn't have the uniform word of God in their hand that somebody will read to them actually the Lord had predicted that in Amos chapter 8 Amos chapter 8 reading from verse 11 Amos chapter 8 verse 11 behold the days come says the Lord God that I will send a famine in the land and a famine not of bread no authors for water but of hearing the words of the Lord in those assemblies that famine of the of hearing the word of the Lord and they were scattered in all those assemblies look at verse 12 in verse 12 and they shall wander from sea to sea and from the north even to the east they shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord and they shall not find it. That's why now James thinking about all those people that were scattered abroad sent the word unto them. The scattered assemblies without the word. Now the word will come to them and they learn about faith. Faith that works. Faith that has an accompanying action. Faith with righteousness. Faith with repentance. Faith with restitution. Faith with the light that shows the evidence of that faith. That's why he wrote to them. Look at number two. Number two, the scattered ambassadors in the world. The ambassadors, that is the believers who were scattered. Look at Acts chapter 8. We're reading from verse 1. Acts chapter 8 from verse 1. And Saul was consenting unto his death. And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad. 
the church and they were all scattered abroad the members and they were all scattered abroad the ambassadors they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria except the apostles the apostles did not go with them and then in verse 4 verse 4 tells us and therefore they that was scattered abroad they that was scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word what were they preaching they were preaching about the things about christ but the things they had heard each one of them did not go with the bible because each one did not have a copy of the Bible with them. And each one did not go with a testament. They didn't have the New Testament with them. They went abroad. Persecution drove them all abroad. The ambassadors of Christ. And what they knew and what they had experienced. That's what they were preaching. When they were scattered abroad, they had not heard that the Jews and the Gentiles would be one will be in one assembly and you have to write to them to tell them this is the truth all they knew is that i have revealed unto you jesus said but there are many things i've not told you because she cannot receive them now how be it when the holy ghost is come it will guide you into all truth and paul the apostle came right in all those epistles our place in christ our position in christ our, prayer, our kind of uh, our um, provision privilege in christ the new nature that god has given and the gentiles being of the same household as the Jews, all that they had not known, and they were scattered abroad. And you have to write to them, to those ambassadors who are scattered abroad in the world. The same thing with us today. Uh, we need to have the word of God as we scatter everywhere. And uh, whether we are here in Nigeria, we're here in different parts of Africa, in Asia, everywhere, we have to send the word everywhere because even though we are saved, even though we are sanctified, even though we are filled with the Holy Ghost, there are things yet we do not, we do not know. There are things yet that has not really uh, gotten into our stream, our veins and it ought to mix with our mind, our brain, our soul, our spirit. So we are sending the word to, the, to those ambassadors scattered in the world we're looking at number three here number three we're looking at the scattered adventurers in the wilderness there are people apart from persecution scattering them abroad there are people that are scattered abroad for adventure for adventure and they're looking for the greener field they're here they're there they're everywhere and they discover when they get there it's all of a wilderness a wilderness and these adventurers in the wilderness they've gone how can they come back now they want to settle there they want to make a living there and they want to do some adventures there and yet the fullness of the world is not available to them James said I'm writing to you that are scattered whether you are scattered in those assemblies or you are scattered as ambassadors or you are scattered as advocates in the world we live today, how many people leave their country? They leave, uh, you know, maybe in Nigeria, they leave Africa and they are adventurers. They want to see what I can get and they want to see I can make use of my profession and we cannot neglect them. We cannot overlook them. They are there and we're telling them the word is being sent to you because you are adventurous and you are not here and you are not discovering assemblies where you can hear the word of God like you used to hear when you were here at home and now it's available you can look at it on the youtube on the internet and google that and everything now it says it's possible to send the word to adventurers who are scattered all about him matthew chapter 9 reading from verse 36 
26. Matthew chapter 9, verse 36. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and they were scattered abroad. They were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. A sheep having no shepherd. Yes, I'm still a believer. Yes, I'm still a child of God. I understand. But in your adventure where you are now, there's no pastor over you. And there's no leader over you. There's no shepherd over you. Yes, you can watch, you can listen, but you, any if temptation comes, there's nobody to say, hey, if you do that, you'll be disciplined. Nobody knows how you live and nobody can discipline you. You're all alone there, scattered as adventurers. That's why you ought to help yourself and make sure you connect with the world and you connect with leadership anywhere you are. You connect with the pastors and the preachers and the leaders and the shepherds that are still over there so that the isolation where you are will not make you to go astray in verse 37 verse 37 then saith he to his disciples the harvest truly is plenteous but the laborers are few verse 38 it says pray ye therefore the lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers to his harvest in john chapter 11 john chapter 11 reading from verse 50 john 11 verse 50 now consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people and that the whole nation perish not. Verse 51, in verse 51, and they speak he not of himself, not by himself, but being the high priest that year he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation in verse 52 and not for that nation only but that also he should gather together in one the children of God that was scattered abroad that by his death by his resurrection by the shedding of his blood by his sacrifice on the cross of Calvary that Christ should gather in one all the children of God that are scattered abroad those who are scattered abroad to remain children of God they need the word of God and that's why James said I'm writing to those who are scattered abroad and some who are scattered abroad because of where they are now no supervision because of where they are now no counseling because of where they are now no king and everyone living by himself and sometimes they will not even connect with the message they have always been hearing when they were at home some drift away and some backslide and some they are living the wilderness life that's the reason why we're sending the word to those who are scattered abroad in their adventure james chapter 5 verse 19 brethren if any of you do err from the truth and one convert him if any of you do err, do wander from the truth in seeking adventure, in seeking for bread and butter, in seeking for great, you know, opportunities there overseas. If by seeking like that and being in adventure like that, any of you do err from the truth and one convert him, the word has to be sent following after them and one convert him look at verse 20 it says let him know that he which converts the sinner he was a believer he was a sage he wandered away he erred from the truth in his adventure let him know that he which converts the sinner from the error of his way shall save his soul from death 
and shall hide a multitude of sins. Let's come back to James chapter 1, verse 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. He wants us to rethink and to look at our lives and to search our hearts. Are you a real, faithful, forthright, transparent servant of God and of Jesus Christ? He wants us to search a record straight at this time, beginning of the year. Are you a bond slave of Jesus Christ? You are saved. You are absolutely surrendered unto the Lord and your mind is with him all the time and he approves of your servanthood. We need to check up and we need to make everything straight before him and all those secret pattern of living and of behavior as if you don't have him as your governor, him as your ruler, him as your leader, as if you are not his servant of Jesus Christ, a born slave of Jesus Christ, and you think without thinking about him, and you act without thinking about him, and you live without thinking about him, we need to bring ourselves on this first day of the year to be servant of the Lord Jesus Christ, and then to those who are scattered abroad, if he is scattered abroad so much, you are so near, but you are too far. You are near the Bible study, but you are far away. You are here in a community, in a vicinity, and you are so scattered that you will not even come. The Bible study is so near you, physically, and the distance is not so much, but you don't always come. Or maybe you are scattered, but you can join the nearest assembly which you are there, but you are sort of an independent mind that the word comes and you are not connected with the world. Here is the opportunity for us to start the year in such a good way that wherever we are, whether we are here or we are there, we connect with the world and we do not allow being scattered abroad everywhere to deny us of the profit and the possibilities of the world in our lives. I pray that what the Lord brings to us this day and this year and henceforth will make the best use of everything in Jesus name and the word will prepare us to meet the Lord will not be acting like we are acting before why has not the Lord come before now because if the Lord had come many of us would have been left behind. If the standard of the word of God remains the standard, if the word of God is true, those things we're doing in the past, hiding behind the curtain, hiding behind the closed door, hiding behind the name of the Christian, you know, we would have been lost, but he has given up the chance. Now here we come so that as the word comes to us, we're now saved, we're sanctified, we're transparent, we're transformed, and our lives will be of benefit to everyone around us. We'll receive the word of God diligently, and then when we get back home, we're searching the word to find out and to get deeper into the word that when the Lord will come, will be the faithful and the wise servant doing what he expects us to do and living the way he wants us to live. Let's uh, rise up and let's uh, honestly commit ourselves unto the Lord and uh, let it be different from how it was previous years. Make it a new day and make it a new attitude so that all year round we're so submissive to the Lord as the servants and our lives will bring glory and honor unto him. Open your mouth and pray to the Lord. New attitude, new approach, new commitment. Let him hear you pray.
You are not meditating, you are praying. Are you truly saved? Salvation with evidence. Faith for salvation. Faith for sanctification. Sanctification with evidence. Faith without works is dead. Faith without accompanying action. Evidential lifestyle. Faith without transformation of life. Dead. Profession without the practical life to back it up. Let the faith come alive. Be a peculiar servant. Peculiar experience. Peculiar observable salvation. Peculiar evident sanctification. Distinct, different from your past life. Look at this present particular servant. Really, brother of the Lord Jesus, but he will not say so. He will not give an air of familiarity. Servant of God. Servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. How are you carrying out your present servanthood? unto the Lord are you meek and lowly a Jesus are you thoughtful careful like Jesus do you forbear threatening Or is your word, your look, your action threatening other people? Before they challenge you and before they say, Hi about this, hi about this, your look, your word was threatening them. Put some kind of subtle fear in them. You don't even allow us to love you. You don't want us to come near. You have so much to hide. You don't want us who can help and counsel and lift you up. You don't want us to come near. You're building iron fence around yourself and if we don't recognize that fence then you threaten Christ was not like that
he that says she abideth in him ought himself so to walk so to speak so to act so to behave as he did Christ the model of a true servant a trustworthy servant a transparent servant be like him Let God affirm your semblance to Christ, the true servant. Let us see, let the Lord see that absolute surrender, absolute submission to the Lord as a transparent servant. Trustworthy, trustworthy. Every moment, the way you live will be approved of the Lord. And even if the Lord were to come at that moment, you're not in an action, you're not in an attitude, you're not in a disposition. the Lord will frown at when he comes you're always living in the consciousness of the Lord's return and in all the scattered assemblies all over the world In every country, in every nation, it's the same word that will qualify us for heaven. Anywhere we are, the same standard, the same word, in every assembly scattered all over the world, the same word that now is sent unto us will prepare us for the coming of the Lord and let every assembly hold on to the word as if you were right here at the headquarters of Deep Alive the scattered ambassadors The scattered workers, the scattered preachers, the scattered evangelists, the scattered singers, the scattered leaders everywhere. Don't act as if you are unteachable. As if you are untouchable. As if you are independent. Live in total, absolute surrender, submission to the Lord. Don't fight back when the word comes to you. When the message comes unto you. There is but one thing to do, just obey, just obey. Scattered adventurers, if you happen to be in adventure, greener fields outside, the word is coming to you. Receive the word. 
believe the word sanctify them through thy truth the word is truth don't allow the adventures of the wilderness of the world to take the word from you be so grateful the word comes to you go check it out go find it out go listen go receive so that the same word you would have been hearing if you were here at home with us that same word you can still hear is now available every day every moment you see you are going down your faith your grace your life shut up yourself in your chambers turn on the word and let the word manifest its power to bring you back where you ought to be restored revived reformed ready for the coming of the Lord in Jesus name we pray yeah. Father we thank you for your goodness we thank you for your word this first day of the year we pray your word will do good to every life in Jesus name yeah. we're praying the word and the blood of the Lamb will walk together in every life you cleanse us you'll purge us you'll purify us and prepare us for the coming of the lord in jesus name Amen. and every day and every moment henceforth your word will not be far from our heart Amen. we will study the word we live by the word and every blessing in the world will be ours in Jesus name Amen. and when the Lord shall come anywhere we are in the world we pray O oh Lord will not miss out on that final day in Jesus name Amen. make this day a day of blessing Amen. this week a week of blessing this month a month of blessing yeah. and this year for everyone young and old a year of blessing for everyone yeah. this year lift us higher yeah. this year take us further yeah. this year make use of us more than ever before in Jesus name yeah. this year let our Christian profession, a Christian confession, a Christian evidence. Let it be higher than ever before in Jesus' name. Confirm your blessing on every life. And make everyone without exception a channel of blessing to everyone around. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Yeah.